ready. Take a yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Seb, you good? I'm, I'm ready to go. Hey everybody, it's Robert Lewis from National Fire Radio. We're here tonight with a couple different people in the, in the studio. Uh, actually, it's pretty cool. We have two Tuckers. Joining us back is Tucker Daly, who's going to be now jo joining us as one of our co-hosts. And we have Tucker Harding from First Do Fabrications here to talk to us about some pretty cool stuff with uh, fabrications. And as always, Jeremy Dotch in the corner. Hey ready guys. to uh, do it up? We're going to do it. Tonight's good, good night. Tucker Squared. Yeah, and you and yeah. I, I think, uh, I think real quick. Um, if this was a battle, like WWE, we would be in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, we would. We would, <laughs> we would lose. I mean, no we must for going sumo. I, I think know? what would. Yeah. Wow. I think <laughs> what would happen. I would. You know what? I would talk you into submission. <laughs> the big one. Yeah, I would talk you into submission. <laughs> and I'd just run around. Hey guys, you Jeremy, know? National Fire Radio. All right, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> let's roll. <laughs> So, right. Seb, we're good on the, uh, and as always, we have uh, Sebi on the on the uh, tech. He's a lot smarter than all of us put together, so mm -hmm. he takes care of all the uh, important <laughs> stuff. Um, but anyway, let's get rolling, man. Rob, take the lead and let's do this. Yeah, so typically this is where we, we talk about your first time with the fire service. Um, so, but also you have this unique ability with uh, first two fabrication and what you were doing down at that Pierce dealership in uh South Plainfield. South Plainfield, New Jersey. Fire and safety. Fire services. and safety services. Services. services, not solutions, like I kept saying in a right lot of the role. On the, on the uh, blooper reel. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so we got a lot where, of blooper reel stuff. There's no doubt. Your fire helmet, where does that hang and where do you call home? Fire helmet hangs in Lebanon Borough, um, New Jersey. I'm a volunteer captain there. Um, I've been with that department uh, about eight years now. Okay. Um, Came in not knowing anything about it. Uh, worked my way up to captain there. Um, that's home. Nice. Do you have a bloodline in the fire service, or you came in? Cold? I came in cold. Um, I'd yeah. always kind of been into it. Right. Um, I used to live in Maine. Um, met my wife through some mutual friends. She lived in Jersey. Here I am in Jersey. Jersey. Uh, you girl. guys can put two and two together. Yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Got it. It just so happens her dad is the chief of the department. He's been chief for. 18 years now. Wow. Um, I believe he's worn white for probably 30 years or better. So you had an easy in. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. It was, it was funny. When I moved down here, I, I'd always kind of been interested in it, but in Maine, where I was, there wasn't a lot of avenues to get into it. And I was a young punk kid that was right. into, into cars, race cars. That's what I was doing with my, with my uh, spare time. So I moved down here, still kind of doing the the race car thing, um, and she said, you're not joining the firehouse. These are my guys. This is my house. I grew up here. Yeah. 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 If this is my thing. You are right. not doing it. Right. Monday night is our firehouse night. One Monday, we're sitting at home. Her dad's gone. Her mom's gone. Um, her sister is still there, but I don't know if she was down at the firehouse or not, but it was her and I. Um at the house, and where is everybody? They're down the firehouse. Oh. Yeah. You know, and then it just kind of... Right. I joined, got a little flack from the guys because of who I was. You know what I mean? I'm, of course. I'm coming in as this young kid, knows nothing, dating the chief's daughter, living in the chief's basement. Yeah, look at this guy coming, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, so, so and, and of course, that that's how we all would be towards... <laughs> This kid coming oh, without in, a doubt, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I feel an obligation to the chief to be that way. I mean, to an extent, right? And uh, <laughs> you know, again, it, it was it was a definite weird situation. But uh, you know, came in um, eight years later. I worked my way up to captain. Awesome. Whether you want to think that has anything to do with no, it doesn't. You know, it's, it's, um, listen, mowing the you, lawn, you, can, you, you know. You can, you can take that for you can take that for what it's worth. People will leave line. comments and let us know what actually happened. Right, I'm so sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, what, you know what happens to a lot of the guys that come in that that don't have the legacy behind them, and then they come into the fire service. If it's not in them, they're gone. Right, yeah, they so burn yes, out. Yeah, absolutely. They burn out real and, quick. And and we see that we're a small rural town. Right, Lebanon Borough is one square mile. Right, we we cover a lot of. Some towns that are close, um, some first due mutual aid agreements, right. um, some towns that don't have their own fire department that the surrounding departments cover. Like a fire protection district. Like a fire, yeah, okay. kind of. We're, we're not a district. We're completely right. self-owned. The town doesn't own us. Um, 
Oh, so you're independent. We're an independent. No kidding. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Which is which is. Which you is buy great. your own engines then? They're in our name. So where the money actually came from, every truck is a little different. I'm sure it's all <laughs> legal and on the up and up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. But, no, you know, I'm that's sure. what I'm saying. Some of them, some of them were purchased by us. Yeah. Some of them were purchased by the town for us. Gotcha. Um, you know. Oh, I get it. Like my department. I mean, we're we're a, we're a suburban department. Right. Municipal. You know, the municipality pays for our uh, you know budget and so on. But we buy the cheese yep. vehicles. The yeah. company for right. donation money and so right. on. Sure. We do too. We right. purchase the Chiefs vehicles yeah. and then the town might outfit them, right? So they might put the money into the command box and the lights and the radios and so on. Yeah, you but tie that into your budget. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, so, so I get it. I get it completely. So rolling into it, your your experience in the fire service, like once you got all your training and everything, what was your like first fire? I want to say it was it was an attic fire big uh two and a half story um you know new construction uh they had an air handler put in and uh, an air handler put in that day that night their house burned down oops started in the attic candled um, the air well then. yes yes it did um <laughs> yeah so i want to say that was uh that was that was the first one got in got some knob time nice um yeah you know now that was the hook I guess, yeah. It's just it's one of those things, you know. I'm a very hands-on kind of guy, right? So you get in, you get to something like the fire service, which is a very hands-on, blue collar almost sure. thing, and you just and I like taking classes. I don't care what it is, if it's fire service, welding and fabrication, firearms, anything to better yourself and you know learn more. So as soon as I got on, I was I was the kid that was at a class every weekend. That's cool. Learning That's something. Yeah. Just to just to do it, just to get what's uh out of you the know, basement? Get to the century yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to get out of the basement. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean That's funny. Yeah. Tucker, what uh just in, in a I guess it's a kind of like a role analysis, but you know, I know I know what you do, and we'll get into it in a little bit mm-hmm. here. How is it going to like fire one classes as somebody who's self motivated in an industry, and then pretty much your, I don't want to say like your own business, but like really you're you're kind of driving your own self professionally yep. with some of the other mixtures that may come into a fire one class. It's interesting. My generation kind of has a, a split. You have the blue collar. As I, I'm How from, old are you? I'm 32. Okay. I'm from Maine. I was lucky enough to go to a high school that still offered metal shop, yeah. the wood shop. Right. Um, we didn't have an auto shop, but we had a polytech program where you could leave high school and go to, you know. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I spent every waking minute in the yeah in the shop i was know? a 900 wing kid man yeah like, like i lived in the 900 wing that was wood shop metal shop right. auto shop drafting like right that's then that's how it was that the, there right. was there was an outbuilding behind the high school that was wood shop metal shop so drafting photography the art buildings were out there i was skipping english class yeah. and going out there i was Without skipping you know mm-hmm. biology and going out there to fix desks that kids had broken in the high school you know what i mean yeah. and s- somehow i graduated yeah, but because uh, you fixed the principal's desk, that's right. It's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so get, get back to it. You say that budget line. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Budget, so get back yeah. to your saying, Ron. That's um, funny. You know, you, you see, you see both. You see the very blue collar, um, common sense, hands on type of people, mm-hmm. and then you see the type of people that can't tie a knot. Yeah. You know, so it's it's really it's really kind of. From 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 my perspective, I want to get in there. I want to I want to learn. I want to get dirty. I want to make the most out of this class. I want to um, better yourself. Better you, myself. Yeah, yes. absolutely. You know what I mean. If you're, if, if you're taking the time out of your day, yeah, to go take this class. Get something out of it. And we've you know t- I mean? we've talked about this. Good. I was oh, gonna say so time is money, and your time is worth something. So, like, I always looked at training classes. If I'm not getting something out of the class, yeah. like, I'm wasting my time. Absolutely, and I could be doing other things with Absolutely. my time right now. And th- that brings me into after high school. Um, I learned to weld freshman year in high school. Um, after high school, I went out to a pretty popular at the time tech school. 
uh, based for, you know, automotive, race car, chassis stuff. Um, that's what they they claim, marketed themselves right, after. Right, right, right. It was a school to produce techs to work in dealerships. Right. So I get out there, and I, I know how to weld more than these kids. I know how to do a lot of this stuff. I'm passing all these tests, and I'm sitting here doing nothing. Why am I here? Why am I paying money for this? I get it. I'm out. Yeah. So I bailed back to Maine. Um, ended up uh, working in a uh, race car and hot rod chassis fab shop, building a lot of it. Um, go fast, turn left. You know, stock cars. That's what I like to. Cool. I like to call yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and I learned more there than you would learn in any in any school. You know, you learn from the old salty welder and fabricator and. You know, machinist yep. guy that has all the tricks up his sleeves and the little shortcuts and yeah. stuff here. And, you know, you bounce around from chassis shop to body shop to I got into Volkswagen. So I worked at a Volkswagen shop doing doing that kind of stuff. And, I, you know, you I had of, one of those 1% Volkswagens where yeah. they were like, hey, you either buy a Volkswagen and you love it or the 1% that buys it and spends a lot of money fixing it. And that, that was... I, I, th I think that's the 100% of Volkswagen owners. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Needless to say, I still love them. I'm still a total yeah. Volkswagen Audi Porsche yeah. geek. Yeah. But... Uh, but it, so, and then that kind of snowballs into where you are today. And so... Right, into the welding and fabrication thing. Right. And so for everybody watching and listening, like just, you know... Uh, I think a lot of people that know our content now know that we do the apparatus innovations right. and we talk about fire apparatus uh, and we try to hit on the more unique type of uh, innovations, if mm -hmm. you will, that are coming out into the market. And because custom fire apparatus have the word custom in it, the, you know, nothing's the same mm -hmm. for the most part. So um, if you haven't seen the content, Tucker, we got mixed up with Tucker through fire and safety services down in South Plainfield, which is the uh, New York Metro Pierce dealer. New Jersey. New Jersey. We cover just, okay. just Jersey. Because okay. when you mention it to another uh, <laughs> uh, dealership that if you don't have a Tucker on staff, then we need to figure out how this engine is going, or this yeah. water truck is going to come from Wisconsin and stop at first due sa uh, fire, fire safety, safety to have first due fabrication work on it. Right. Um, right. And, and, and then I get a phone call from one of the bigger wigs out at the <laughs> manufacturer saying, hey, this guy asked if we had a tugger and we have to send a truck from this state to your state. And yeah. Wait, hold on. Did that really happen? Oh, yeah. I said, I, <laughs> I, I, I said right in the, uh, for those of you who are listening in, we, we're, we're, we're in the process of a ladder truck committee, and committees are a lot of fun. <laughs> and we had a local dealer uh, come up uh, and an uh, apparatus manufacturer that Tucker is familiar with. That way I pretty much neutralized myself here in this one. But, um, yeah, it's not name names. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was very impressed with uh, with Tucker's work that we got to see at Fire Safety Services. And my comment to the manufacturer or to the uh, dealership was, "Listen, if you don't have a Tucker, then we need to figure out how to get this truck to Fire uh, Fire Safety Services because I want Tucker to mounting my equipment." Right. I'll work on it. Bring it. So down. and so, real quick. So, what we're talking about here is we got mixed up with Tucker and Fire and Safety. Mm -hmm. Tucker uh, is in the fabrication shop. Uh, they do all the tool mounting, uh, shelves, dividers, brackets, and everything is basically manufactured in-house. They do their own welding, cutting, bending, you name it. Yeah, and so, so that history that you've been talking about working in the race car shops and so on brings you to why and how you got here with us. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, you know, um, we recognized a few weeks ago we were down at Fire and Safety. They were nice enough to... Have us in so we could uh, do some apparatus innovations on some of the Pierce apparatus that have come in. And we were just very impressed and blown away by the, the product that you guys were putting out. And so, you know, we feel it's important to highlight that. And, and Fire and Safety and Pierce should be very happy to have guys like you that take a tremendous amount of pride in, in, in your craft and, and so on. Because at the end of the day, the majority of the equipment you push out is for volunteer departments. And Absolutely. the volunteer departments yeah. are putting a lot of money into these apparatus uh, that last a 20 year, 25 right. year purchase. Yeah. And so, you know, for you to put your heart and soul into the extrication compartment or the saw compartment mm -hmm. or whatever to fabricate brackets and so on, I mean, it's just, it's a home run. And so that's why, and we're so glad that we got mixed up with you because I think um, we wanted to bring your story out tonight. And, and so I think the remainder of our conversation here is going to be about what you yeah. guys do yeah. and, and yeah. To, to really educate 
the the brothers and sisters out there about fire apparatus and and what what you can and can't do and and you know the sky's the limit and with guys with your talents and so on you know uh, you can do anything i appreciate so it i think it's super I like to cool, think so like yeah that. yeah <laughs> so it, it, it's evident in in the material that we saw uh that day that uh-huh. we could put our hands on and and for those of you who are out there check out the videos on instagram because there's one where we we do the uh, saw com- like the compartment had a saw on it and i think i was the one who was like hey where's the strap and he was like he had a smile on his face. He's like, <laughs> "Well, if you need a strap in the first place, there's a huge problem." But uh-huh. like seriously, taking the saw out of this compartment, the fabrication was done custom for the saw, and the saw fit perfectly, and it came out perfectly. So I mean, that I was just, I was blown away it's, by that. It's kind of one thing that I straps are like my pet peeve. As a fireman myself, mm-hmm. I can relate to these guys. When I get out of the rig, I try to get out, if, if it's a job, I try to get out gloved up, ready to rock and roll. I don't want to mess with straps. I don't want to mess with anything. I want to get my saw and get to the roof. I want to get my hook and get it, you know, I want to get what I need to get. I don't want to make, waste time messing with straps, this and that, whatever. So I try to make all the mounts or whatever form fitting to to the saw or to the to the tool. Yeah. Um, and we, we get people that absolutely have to have a strap on everything. Yeah. And and I try to tell people, say, look. Tucker's laughing like he knows. <laughs> yeah, see, look, if, if yeah they went away. Right, they come I, and they go. Right. Yeah, right. I say, look, if, if your strap comes out of, or if your saw comes out of this mount with no strap on it, you have bigger problems. Right. Your apparatus is now on its lid and your strap or your saw is falling out. Right. You know? I, and we should add that probably the door that's the compartment of that saw has also... Is now gone. It's gone because of the rollover or whatever. <laughs> or potential jammed shut because yeah, yeah. Right. But uh, again, I don't, I don't want to mess around. I want to get up, you know, get out of the truck, gloved up, you know, ready, you know, battle ready, as they say. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? I just want to. You got to get to work, and that's how a lot of these, the the the, the new generation of young, um, young guys that just want to get in and get to work and get stuff done. Um, got to make stuff quick easy fireman proof yeah you know yeah. Um, so take us take so it's funny because i, I sit here we had uh, deputy chief calvin on from hackensack new jersey yep and there was something that he said in his podcast that sticks with me even to today it's training based versus you know um reality based or, or based. experience based okay right? yeah. so today's fire service is training based 25 years ago 30 years ago it was experience based Absolutely. right and i think you know, hearing you say that this generation now, um, I mean, I'm 41 years old and you're 32. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you're, you're a decade behind, right? And then there's guys a decade behind you mm-hmm. and they're looking up to you as their captain and so on. And so that generation, because it's training based, right? Mm-hmm. They, like you said, you want to eat up as much training as you can, better yourself, better your education. Those guys want to go to work. Yeah. They want to go to work. Yeah. They're hungry for that work because yeah. it's not, it's few and far between these days. Mm-hmm. And so... I think, you know, what I guess what I'm getting at is is that, you know, the equipment needs to be set up and built for today. Absolutely. And so, you know, having a guy like yourself and the other guys, um, forgive me for the other guy in the shop, Rob. Was, Rob, that guy was awesome too. I mean, he was mm-hmm. in between all the nonsense like, we were doing. Minion glasses. I'm yeah. happy about that. We'll, we'll post that. We'll he does have a thing for minions. I, yeah. I, wow. I, you know. <laughs> Um, but, uh, which, well, I just, I, you know, I think it, I think it's, uh, but also uh, the things in the past, we were kind of delegated by whatever the manufacturer gave us, right? You know, like Mac would only have say six different styles of trucks and right. that's all you get. That's all you get. So you can manufacture things to go in there, but now we're looking at, you know, ways to get off the truck and I'm ready to go. Yeah. So it's, you know, underneath the door, there's a little bar. So you just grab that instead of having to go into a compartment. Yeah. Right. You know, all these things now we're laying out so it's a lot easier just to, you got your gear on in the truck and most of us pack up in the truck, but some don't, you know, some it's on the outside for safety, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, but it's set up for you to gradually get everything together, get on in a good pace and you're not slowing down looking for stuff. What's right. in this compartment? Right. What's in that compartment? What I, what I tell people, customers, who are kind of 
hesitant. They don't understand why they should spend 10, 15, 20 grand to mount their tools on the truck is if you're worried about money, you shouldn't have bought a fire truck. <laughs> you should have bought a dump truck, put some blinky lights on it, yeah. put all your stuff in the back, pull up on scene, dump it out, and sort through the pile and get what you need. Because you can have the best fire truck, ladder truck, tower ladder, engine squad, quint, squenjin, whatever you want to call them these days. Squenjin. Whatever you Squenjin. Squenjin. Back I've, I've, I've heard some things. That's a thing. What, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but unless your tools and the stuff you need to get your job done is on that truck and it's set up for success, you just got a big red box on wheels. Right. Because the hard trucks are red. I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where a lot of like <clears throat> committees, when they first start out, they're building a truck, mm -hmm. but they're not thinking of everything that they Absolutely. put on it. And all of a sudden, they look at it and they weigh it. And, Holy crap, we're way overweight. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, because you got to think, Hearst Tool Equipment Absolutely. weighs this much. Absolutely. You know, Five Your stuff toes. weighs. It weighs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you and your department are very... Used to running lower lays. We're hose heavy. I mean, yeah. every uh, every mine, engine. Not so much. A thousand feet would be like we'd be like high fiving each other. We got a lot of hose on. <laughs> you know. Five yeah. Right. And right. not so excited when you have to put it back. Uh, it's yeah. awful. It's, it's, it's when the sun's coming up. <laughs> it's what you have <laughs> juniors for? Yeah. Where? <laughs> send them my way. Yeah. 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 Please. I'd love to have some of them. Please send them I up to the kitchen. Send them my way. Well, I, just, exactly. I got plenty of work for them. Exactly. Um. But just to tell her one of the things that we kind of briefly touched on at the at the shop but like tell the viewers like uh and the listeners what are some some of the things that you wish that uh customers like if, if you had like a top three things like man i wish a customer would just listen to these three things that i have to tell them because it would make the process so much easier for everyone power is like the top top priority people don't think about it <laughs> power and what and, and uh horsepower of power the engine or the no. car okay yeah. Power, 12 volt or 110 power. Put it in every compartment. Yep. Um, well, especially now do. with mm -hmm. battery tools. In the past yep. God, two, three years, how much has battery tools taken over? Every, every rescue tool manufacturer now has a battery line of tools. Right. Hearst, Homatro, um, Genesis, Genesis yeah. Ampis yeah. has their battery tools. Yeah. Uh, Powerhawk. Mm -hmm. Even has you know how many? Yeah. How long has it been since you heard Powerhawk? And, and, and that's and that's just education tool. I'm a blowhard fan now, right? Right. That's right. 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 Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, those are you're right. You're absolutely. And, and, and you're running drills. You're running, uh, you know, screw so guns, zalls, impact guns, portable so radios zalls, for everybody. Portable radios. Um, again, I want to I want to touch on that real quick. Um, but uh, power is just a, a, right. and, a. And when you're making the truck, why not? Like w what we did is we ran power through every compartment. You can always hit it later. Exactly. And as you said earlier, I don't think we were we were on yet, but it's a fire trucks now are 15, 20 year purchases. Yeah. So who's to say that we're gonna have anything gas powered in twenty years on our trucks? Right. Everything's gonna be battery powered. Right, right. So put put power in there and one thing I want to touch on is put it twelve volt battery constant. Too many chargers, too many people are putting their ticks and whatever else on 110. Well, every time that truck leaves the house and the shoreline unplugs, that battery gets cycled. Yeah. It goes off charge and it comes back on so charge. So it's going to be shorter and it's shorter. It's going to be shorter and shorter. Now, some of your uh, portable radio chargers, if they're 110 based, they're not supposed to be in a truck, the, you know, you know, uh, NFPA police will say that those bank chargers aren't supposed to be in a cab because there's no strap on them, yada, yada, whatever. But um, if it's a 110 bank charger, every time that, that fire truck leaves the house, that, that battery on your portable is getting, is getting cycled. A lot of the new chargers have that drain and then recharge right. reconditioning system, which is great. But if it's just a straight 12-volt charger... It's constantly charging off the battery, whether it's plugged in, whether the truck's running, whether the generator's running, whether whatever. Stuff is charging how it should be, because that's the best way to keep a battery. Right. I, I love lasting. this. I'm sitting here. I don't have a lot to say because this is like I'm learning right now. I think so, this is. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. But it's it's Absolutely. it's that that type of thing. So what what what's your what would be your next thing if you have to? Like um, we're just going to be a three because the three strikes you out. Yeah, what do we come into? Um. 
Probably shelving. Okay. I see, I see a ton of people think that more is better. And you open up a compartment and there's five or six shelves there. Yeah. And you only have six inches on each shelf. So you as a fire department spent X amount of dollars on each shelf. Right. Even more X amount of dollars if it's a slide out. Even yeah. more if it's a slide out tilt down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden the truck comes in. You open the door and you want to put this tool on that shelf and it doesn't fit. Yeah, and not only that, but every shelf has a lip, right? Right. So it's like there's people so that are six about. inches apart, but then there's a two inch lip. Right. Now it's four inches right. apart. Right. So I, I, I can't tell you how many times I ship trucks back with loose shelves in the back. So, you know, you guys paid for this. This is your shelf. Right. Take it, put it in the closet at the firehouse, and look at it for 20 years. That's right. Yeah. You know, what it. So that's got to be, you know... Literally. How does... How, just not to cut you off, but how does the the customer avoid that? Because I feel like... Like, is, is it... Because we, we put some shelves in a truck mm-hmm. once, and it was like, oh, yeah, this will be great. And we have, you know... Same thing. We've finally recycled them, but <laughs> um, for scrap metal. But, like, yeah. how does the customer They're avoid that? They hang on the wall like, and put yeah, things yeah. on. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> But like, is that something where like uh, in the in, in the build process yes. that we should be coming to you? Yes. Um, a lot of the salesmen with the company that I work for have started to bring me out on the pre-construction meetings with the fire department, so, oh, right. so I can really look at the blueprints. Because you, you got to think, if you're building a, a new truck as as chief or as the the head of the truck committee, whatever senior guy, whatever you you might be, you're thinking about the entire truck. Right. You're thinking about trying to squeeze 2,000 gallons of water, 2,000 gallon a minute pump, 2,000 horsepower motor. You know, you, you want you want everything. You're thinking about the entire, the yeah, entire the truck. overall truck. Yeah, you're thinking about of, color. You're thinking right. about striping. You're thinking <clears throat> this about, particular compartment and right. what else I can right. fit in. Exactly. You're not thinking about compartments. So and and even with the salesman, the salesman's thinking about the entire truck. He's, he's thinking about weight, which we talked about earlier, right. and, okay. you know, making sure your, you know, front and rear axles are, you know, split nicely, and, you know, salesmen are thinking about salesman things. So when they bring me out, I'm thinking about compartments. I don't care what color your truck is. I don't care how much water you have on your truck. I don't care the size of your pump. I care about your compartments and how much stuff I'm going to be able to put in your compartments. Yeah. So I can look at the blueprint or the, the, the first drawing and say, hey, what are you guys going to put in this compartment? This is your saw compartment? Okay, well, let's put a roll-out slide on the bottom. Let's put a, you know, just how, little stuff like that. How often in the in the process, like I know in all the committees I've been on, we've mm-hmm. been very, very detailed. Yep. We know probably 95% of the equipment that's going in what compartment, mm-hmm. right? Because we've just, over time, we've, we've scaled our department to know the fault form, fit, and function of yep. each apparatus in each compartment. Yep. But I have to think that a lot of departments aren't that squared away. No. And so so I have to think that they rely a lot on you and your salesman mm-hmm. and your company and Pierce in general, right? And, Absolutely. And so on. So, I mean, I think that's hugely important. But, like, I come to you and I say, listen, here's here's everything that's got to go in this compartment, mm-hmm. right? And then what you guys do in your services, because it's a custom fire apparatus, mm-hmm. is you say, great, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this. That's not going to work. Yeah. This can't go in there. Yeah. And I, I think that's hugely important. I think what I want to stress tonight, just with people listening and so on, is that um, custom means custom. Absolutely. And I think that's not stressed enough. And I think we rely as a buyer too much on the salesman and the company to tell you. Sometimes, yeah. Right. I mean, there's only certain things that the manufacturer can do. You know, your your <coughs> body of your fire truck is only so big. Right. And you can only configure your compartments. So right. you know, yeah. what I mean, there's mm-hmm. only yeah. there's only so much space. And at the beginning, they're trying to get the sale anyway, so Without it doesn't enough. matter. And right. yeah. sometimes right. they're not selling you the cab that you saw. I mean, you know, we went through that where we we're like, oh, well, there. I thought there was a bigger compartment here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, but that was on the other cap. Right, that had this. Yeah, this that, right. that was and on the yours, linear chassis. Right, yours couldn't do that <laughs> because you have here. this. Yeah. Well, nobody told me that at right. the beginning. Right. You know, and that's... Yeah. And in the older days, I think we were just looking at everything of going, wow, we got so much more space on this. It doesn't matter because right. we used to yeah, jam we'll everything this, in right, there. Right, right. But now everything's more meticulous, 
and it's how you're going to use it in the operation and when you're going to get it off. Right. The order of operations yeah. is huge. And that's one thing I try to stress to people when I'm going over their trucks with them and trying to lay out tools. What order is stuff coming off the rig? What's the priority? Right. Yeah. And what do you need? That's to... an angle I never would have ever heard people from a salesperson. Yeah, like... People don't think about it. Let's say your, your, your basic bread and butter car accident. Your, your spreaders and your cutters should be outboard. If, if you have a portable pump, you know, you, you, you're not running reels or anything like that, that portable pump and the hoses should be outboard, easy to get to. Your rams, your B-post Everything supports, pre-connected. stuff mm-hmm. like that. That can be in back. It's secondary. Right, because your right. spreaders and cutters are coming off first. Correct. Your cribbing, your step chocks, that should even be in front of... Yeah, you don't be yeah. putting that up in the dunnage area right. like everybody right. does. It does, yeah. So why do you? Because you're going to need it. Right, one of the first things I learned in Hyattsville was that the might like if I'm on the squad, like it's uh step shocks and glass, and they call it the glass pack yeah. to yep. take glass and cover the patient sure. with, with tarps beforehand, yep. you know, and then and, and put the step shocks underneath the right. car. So, so, so that stuff should be you know forward, easy to get to. Mm-hmm. If that's your standard operating procedure, then make that stuff outboard, make that stuff easy to get to for your guys. So, one guy, two guys can can grab that stuff and get to work while the other guy's getting yeah. spreaders, cutters, right. getting, getting set up. Can we can we hit on one thing real quick? Yeah. You said the glass bag. Mm-hmm. Can you explain that to me? I mean, I, I get it. I'm So here's yeah, the thing, yeah. right? So I know, like, on our rescue, mm-hmm. we have tarps. And not tar- we have, like, uh, personal injury tarps, like, for a person in a car accident. Sure. Drape something Patient over them. Protection. But you, so in Hyattsville, you actually have what you call a glass bag? Or, yeah, yeah, there's, so, a, there's a large uh, like canvas bag, and it has the, uh, like, the, the, like, two or three glass masters, and that window punches, yep. uh, like some um, duct tape, and then a couple tarps for the patients inside. We so go when, when, you, when yeah. you're stepping off the back of the squad, it's on the left-hand side, you, it gets by the door, because as you walk out the door, if you're walk, if you're one of the First, uh, essentially, nobody should be walking out of the back of the door, the rescue squad, without grabbing that. Sure. Or the step cribbing. Mm-hmm. But, so, so, but that's my point, right? Yeah. Because that right there is a great idea. We, in my department, we do not have a glass bag, mm-hmm. quote unquote, right? So, but we know what tools are needed, but that's a great little innovation right Absolutely. there is yes, putting yeah, yeah. packaging what you would need for patient assessment and removing glass in, in one package. So and, and that's one person's job, too, which is exactly. the nice thing. Yeah, so yeah. That way, so that's like, there. You yeah. just grab and go. If, if you're the senior guy or the senior firefighter and you're going to be running tools, you know what? The last thing you need to worry about is... Right, patient should be covered. Right. It's all there. Glass like, should be by the removed. Time you're going to work. You get tools in the car. We, we've removed all the glass. We've said breaking glass a couple times, and like everything's yeah. out of the way. And that, that bag is probably easy to access. It's mm-hmm. not buried behind the spreaders and the right. cutters, buried behind yeah. all your cribbing. It's but not. I love that. Like, I love that. that. We just, I'm telling you right now, somebody's going to hear that and go, like, yes. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. The apparatus innovations that we do on Instagram yeah. and Facebook, like something silly, like a glass bag. You know what? It's the first time I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have that in my department. We have a tarp and we have the center punch and the duct tape and we have all of it. He's got to go to more shows. And, I guess so. And, I, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I've only, been do- I've only been doing this a little while, so I mean, shame on me. You can all shit on me later. That's in fine. In Fairview, we have uh, in our glass bag. All right, Rob, you're not going to rub it in. I, I, get it. I was just going to say we have the small crowbars to take off the pan- help take yep. the paneling off so we can see where yep. the... Uh, All right, you win. Got to pile on yeah, the rabbit. He wins. He wins. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm not, it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to pile <laughs> on <up. laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> But, but yeah, that's the sense. point of yeah. this. And I like Absolutely. seeing tools and bags and boxes and stuff. It, well, you got to think about your operation. Absolutely. you got to think about your bread and butter. What, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. we don't run on that many house fires. We're an automobile accident. Yeah, so we one. do the we're same the thing. Same so, right. yep. you know, you do train for that because you never get it. Right. But, you know, the, your bread and butter it should right. be right there. Right. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. That, that's good. Yeah, it's. it makes sense to keep all the tools that work together in the same area. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't care if you have three sets of irons on your truck that are all for different jobs. But if you're going to bring a set of irons to, say, a car wreck, so you can pop a trunk or pop a door or, or whatever you have to do, keep it with all your with all your car stuff. You yeah. know? Keep, keep everything yeah. where... I, 
I have to think, though, your job's getting more difficult because as departments, if you guys, we have our new puppy in the studio, new National Fire Radio puppy. So we might as well, fire we might as well address it. Here's, there you go. That's, that's Atlas. That's a good uh, Atlas. Yeah, so Atlas this is a rescue. This is Rob's rescue of the week. That's awesome. So, yeah. but, all, right. Uh, all right, Atlas, you're out of here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but what I was saying, Tucker, was your job needs to be getting, it must be getting more difficult because we're taking two apparatus and making one now, right? So now we're running squads, rescue right. engines. Uh -huh. We're running, uh, you know, uh, a truck company, but now we have pump and hose. And, yeah, yeah. and some truck companies run execution equipment. So, yeah. like, you guys probably are getting more and more creative as yeah. time ticks off. Yeah. I think we saw uh, like quite a bit of that creativity. Without a doubt. I, mean, I saw yeah. a speedy yeah. dry hopper on an aerial, which was labeled as an engine. So because it's an engine with an aerial device, right? And a speedy dry hop. So it was incredible. Hopper. Like folks, we're not making something up for the TV. <laughs> no, no, no. This all happened in real life, and I will sign a, an affidavit <laughs> saying I saw this. But I mean, but like it's things like that that I just I find. But space is scarce, right? So you yeah. have to fill another every little that, spot. Another thing that's right. kind of neat that I, that I've noticed so like, even just the past year, people are getting away from too many hand tools. Because you got to think, how many guys are you really having on your truck? You got a mm -hmm. you got a six man yeah. cab, you got an eight man cab, you got eight guys. Right. Why do we need four shovels? You know, so because we have snow in New Jersey. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> but, but, but no, I hate snow. I can't, I can't wait. To move there was, there was. Speaking of taking two trucks and making one, I did a rescue truck for a town down south. They had two separate companies, same town, two companies, two separate rescue trucks at each separate house. One was on one side of the bridge, one was on the other side of the bridge, so it made sense to have two separate rescues. However, they got rid of both of those and they got one big rescue. Hmm. So these guys show up at the, truck, uh, at the shop with two rescue trucks worth of tools to put on one rescue truck. And guy from station one wanted his shovel. Guy from station two wanted his shovel. So now you have, oh, so now you have yeah. these guys trying to put six spade shovels on a rescue. Guys, why? You know, so so we're stepping away from, or kind of the, the. I, I, I don't even know tools. how you would like. That's that's a whole other podcast and how you negotiate that Geneva Accord of a. I'll tell you how you do it. But <laughs> you get you get the. You get like I think Seattle's got the tiller rescue, right? Yes. Oh, yes, and then exactly. and then rescue the company orange, one orange has the orange. left side, yeah. And rescue yeah. company two has the right side. Yeah. yeah. And you squeeze all your crap in on your side. Mazel tov. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, which, I mean, so if the company two guys are riding that rig that night, they work off their side. Right. And the company one guys use their shovel. Which, their, which which kind of brings me to another their thing. Their glass bag. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have to get them a glass bag. Yeah. <laughs> I am. No we, we, <laughs> we, we are. As you said earlier, a lot of the, the guys I, I, I cater to are volunteer. Right. But we do get a lot of the career companies obviously buying new rigs, this, sure. that, whatever. So with the whole company one, company two thing, how about tour one, tour two, tour three? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tour, tour one officer wants to grab a Halligan, where a tour two officer wants to grab a six-foot hook, where a tour three officer doesn't want to grab anything. Right. So, so each each tour wants a different tool in this compartment. Yeah. You know, and it's it's a total. No, that yeah. yeah we so all just sat here going, oh. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. And I, and I, I live it because it's it's right. that's the favorite yeah, fire district it. with four different it. fire departments. Right. So you get out of the truck and you go to this compartment expecting to grab a uh, Halligan. When the tour before you took the Halligan out and put a flathead axe in it, right. <laughs> so you know it's a totally weird. But in, in fairness for myself too, that's also my responsibility. It's the first thing when I come yes. in is going back to that truck and saying like, "Hey," because right. I'm I'm a big I, I'm a big guy that carries a Halligan bar. Like mm -hmm. I know, and then people say, "Well, your engine company operations," which yeah. But if I have to go to a garden style apartment, I need to force the apartment Absolutely. across the hallway so I can stretch my line into that and out. So we right. have that. Yeah. One that clear shot, and then that area refuge to go back to. Mm -hmm. I can't rely on the four, or the, well, really the three other people, which one of them's pumping the rig, and the other two are coming in with me. So right. like, you gotta right. take a step. You know? So yeah. from from your standpoint, yes, you you check the rig at the beginning of your tour. From my standpoint, I mount the tool once. 
right. I mount whatever the captain that is at my shop that day wants. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, have to. you know, so, you know, so it's it's a another another kind of cool thing is I go around the truck and I I mount this tool here and I mount that tool here and this guy says to put this here and this guy says to put that there. I get around to the other side of the truck and while I'm over here with with the chief, the captain is over on the other side of the truck moving stuff around. So it's a total weird, you know, uh, yeah, aspect of right. like one. I need to be able to talk to one person, or else you get. Yeah. You know, how how often do you get involved with the pre-plans of any of this stuff, or do you not? I do. Um, often, wise, it, it all depends on the salesman and the customer. Because I would think you would be wanting to bring someone like you in very early into the show. You know, this is what we have from our old vehicle, which are usually smaller, and the yeah. compartments aren't worked out very well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, well, can you make all this fit? And then do we have room for extra? Yeah. Um, it's, it's nice to be brought in when at least there's a basic drawing of the truck. So, one of our salesmen, <laughs> and, and I, I, I Oh, always, we're going to build the truck! Yeah, wheels! Exactly. <laughs> do it. We got some wheels, we got uh, Maybe we're gonna have a ladder on top because all the cool kids ride the ladder. That's you it. know what I mean? We're gonna. So can you put something right? I can put anything right you there, want right there. Perfect. That's awesome. where the pump goes. That's perfect. <laughs> Here you go, everybody. That's, that's perfect. perfect. <laughs> Franklin Lakes is built. <laughs> I'll side, side oh, sale. Well, there's the new rescue. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's over there going, "Where's your glass bag?" Yeah. <laughs> no, it's on this rig. Yeah, oh. Guess what? I'll show you where it is. Yeah. <laughs> One of our salesmen. I, I I give him a hard time, but it works. He takes sticky notes and cuts them to the size of the compartment on the drawing and lays it over over the the, the, the drawing and draws in the, the shelves and writes slide out, writes fixed, writes this, writes that. And then, oh, no, we don't, we don't want that. Rip the sticky note off. Let's put a new one down there. And it's just, it's an easy way to kind of keep track of, you know. I, we, I just Good. want to jump in a couple of years. Well, before I became a career fireman, I had a horrible bout where I was a sales, I, it's customer service representative for Verizon Wireless. So if your phone broke, you brought it to me, and then you got angry at me. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> they, they heard me, and they were not happy. <laughs> but I, the training was down in Perth Amboy, New okay. Jersey, and there was a department at the time that I went to stop by and just be like, yeah, I'm a volunteer up here, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to come see what your guys' firehouse looked like, you know. And uh, they had all their equipment on the floor, and they were getting a new rescue of some sort, and all the equipment was placed where they were going to have it. And they're like, yeah, we're going to build this. And I was like, what? And they're like, we're going to get some, like, that's what all this plywood's for. We're yeah, going to yeah. actually build our fire yeah, We talked about yeah, doing yeah. that with our rescue yeah. when we yeah. designed our rescue truck. Mm-hmm. We were going to build dimensionally each right. cabinet. We did that. No. You did. Yeah. What, what mm-hmm. people seven don't or the, yeah. think about, okay. we get a lot of cardboard, people doing though. that. Mm-hmm. They get, yeah, you get cardboard, yep. or you just put, you know, blue tape down on the yep. floor in a square that's the size of your, you know, tool board or your compartment opening or whatever. But what people don't think about is the mount for that tool. Right. You know, oh, yeah. I've had so many people bring me pictures or show me pictures. All right, well, we taped out a 24 by 48 square on the floor, and we managed to fit all these tools in there. Great. Great. Good job. Here's yeah. a <laughs> However, did you leave room around each one the of those tools brackets. for the mounting brackets? Yeah. Can you fit a gloved hand in around that tool to get it out? Can you get this tool out without pulling this tool out? Yeah. Right. Stuff that people don't <clears throat> people right. don't do it every day, don't think about it. And right. it, it's, it's not their fault. But, you know, you, you got to understand, I, I work with certain types of tool mounts every day. The, the pre, pre-made, you know, straps and clips and whatever. So I understand how much room that takes up. So how much room I need between... But you would also, also think as, I mean, Pierce makes how many vehicles a year approximately? I think about 2,000 right. you, You're making 2,000 vehicles a year. How come my engineer doesn't know a lot of this stuff when I go to pre-construct? Have you ever met an engineer? Yeah, I have. <laughs> like, if you ever watch Office Space, you'd understand it. It's a guy, I bring the plans out of the welders, engineer. A welder's <laughs> worst enemy is it? An yeah, because, engineer. And, and the way we laid out our vehicle, we had a lot of problems with ladders and so forth. Yeah. So we had to be on the engineers all the time. But why do we, as the purchaser, have to be on that, or you as the fabricator have to be on that, when 
realistically, these guys, as these trucks come out, can like knock it almost off, like click it off. Well, this is the way we solve this problem, right? So, you know, it should go down the line. And when you ask them these questions, they shouldn't be dumbfounded like they seem to be mm -hmm. a lot of times. And I'm not calling these engineers dumb. It's just that they're doing the same thing over and over again. And after a while, they should let us know these things. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I mean, they see it on paper. Oh, yeah, no, this obviously needs to be corrected. And on our new vehicles, it will be. Right. Well, how come I don't know this as I'm buying this now? Right. So am I getting the last one that's crap? Right. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of it, too, though. Like, I, I equate it to when we built our, we just built two at the same time. And they weren't the same. And I'll tell you, I never want to build two again at the same time. They were time. nice, though. They, there's a lot of thought that went into Thank those. You. They came out. Thank you. Yeah. Hence, National Fire Radio and Apparatus <laughs> Innovations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we put, no, but I mean. Although, but, although I don't think you let me touch those other than some work I had to do on the rear of one of them. Probably. Yeah, well, then. All right, let's move on. So, <laughs> so let's Tucker's on. great, everybody, but we didn't have them work out now. We, um, you know, and, and I'm it's really, a budget thing. I'm really proud of our apparatus. And we, we bought a, a Class A engine and, and a uh, pumper tanker, 3,500 gallon pumper tanker. And that's one of the first ones that Pierce put on the line at 3,500 gallons. So it's a big boy. Yeah. Um, but we put a lot of thought and Absolutely. innovation into those rigs. And a lot of what started myself doing these apparatus innovation mm -hmm. clips was because what. We brought to the table in my hometown. I realized a lot of people hadn't done before. You don't think about and it. I, right. And so, you know, the, real quick, like the hose bed dividers. So yep. I had I had a fantastic conversation. One of my best friends was a fireman with me for many years, and he moved out to Long Island, and now he's a fireman in Long Island in a very busy department out there as a volunteer. And he called me. We were talking about National Fire Radio the other night. He called me, and we were talking about it. He said, how's it going? I see you, 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 know, you guys are getting market share, and things are going good. I said, yeah. And he goes, he goes, I have to tell you. He goes, we had a kitchen fire the other night. And where they are, they have hydrants every corner. So he's like, we laid in. It was like 200-foot light. And he goes, uh, we laid in first to stretch the line in, kitchen fire. Uh, he goes, knocked it down one line real quick. It was like cabinets, whatever, you know. He goes, knocked it down real quick, um, and so on. And then he goes, and then we go outside, and he goes, since I'm newer on the department, this is one of my first fires where I was packing a hose. And he goes, I'm up in the hose bed, and he's like, what a pain in the ass. He goes, the dividers are so deep on these new engines, oh, yeah. because everybody wants to, you know, vertical or an L-shaped tank yeah. with these low hose low beds. Hose but when you go to pack them, they're... They're a pain in the yeah, ass. Like a guys have a six foot hook or a broom right. handle they're using, right? right? <laughs> so, so he said to me, my buddy says to me, he goes, I have to tell you, he goes, I actually thought about one of your segments. And he goes, what you guys did on your hometown engines was you guys did cutouts in the hose bed dividers so that you can reach through dividers to get to the hose load. Because ultimately your, your hose divider might be four feet tall on some of these newer engines. Mm -hmm. But your hose isn't four feet tall. So there's no reason to have your dividers that high. So either you cut them down to the hose load that you're carrying, or what we did was we cut out big windows in between all the dividers and then put round stock across the top so it still stays rigid, rigid. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But you can reach through so every divider has windows in them. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that before. And that was one of my things. I said to my guys, I said, I think we should try this. No, but I've never seen it before. It's been on my mind. Like I just innovation wise, I was like, this might be something that works. We went out to Pierce, and Pierce looked at me, and they're like, what? What do you want to do? And I go, yeah, I want to cut the dividers out, and then, you know, this and that. And they worked with us on it, and they, they ended up doing it. And then at the end of it, um, they were, they really liked it. And then they came and said, you know, hey, we're, you know, this is a great little option, and, you know, we think it might be, you know, a good thing. And I said, yeah. I said, the way everybody wants these low hose beds now. Yeah. They're pain in the ass. They look great. Yeah, they're awesome. Nice the blows. Suck to back hose. Yeah, and so, you know, it's simple things like that. But but my buddy said to me, which was really cool because it was validation on what we're all doing here, but it was also really cool to hear from somebody that I actually care about, right? And he was like, I went back to your video and then took it to my department and showed the guys and said, listen, I know I'm the new guy here and everything, and I don't want to be that guy, but hey, listen, I saw this. This might work. And then all the guys were like, that's cool. Like, I've never seen that before. So I think that's why we're here, yeah, and, and that's why you're here. Yeah. A lot of times in, in our area, I mean, here we have hydrants all over the place. So 
really you shouldn't be carrying more than a thousand feet. A thousand feet is where the engine should stop because it ran out of hose. And then you do inline pumping from there. When they start putting more hose on this, you empty one side of the bed and you make a little corner, and now that divider just went. Oh, yeah. without a doubt. Oh, yeah. When they start you know, getting, it's yeah, like, there's a lot of leverage. So, there's too many of these of vehicles. There. Oh, I can put two, 3,000 foot of hose on it. Well, do you really need you that? Really What's that? the real purpose of that? I, and and yeah, all right. the weight that that puts on your vehicle. Yeah, without a doubt. Without there, a doubt. There, there was a salesman who came up to us from an apparatus manufacturer. And I'm doing so well at being politically correct, and I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> and he, showed us, he showed us this low hose bed. He's like, look at how low the hose bed is. And you can fit 2,000 feet of 5-inch on it. And I said, man, I, I see how low it is. I think that's really cool. I said, but I also see how narrow the channel is, and it's only three folds. So when I empty that out, like, is it pretty much that my guys are going to be in this claustrophobic divider area? And he's like... Well, I mean, it's going to be good to go off, and, like, we're primarily focused on, like, the incident at hand, and I'm like, what right. if I run a lot of incidents? <laughs> yeah. And How many times do I have to put this back on? Yeah, yeah. like, I yeah. mean, the first one, cool, second time, all right, third time, yeah, not I'm not so going to be so happy this about old. this. Yeah. Like, you know, so, yeah. It, I, but I, I think that's the importance of this, right, is the practical thinking. When you go in to build an apparatus, yeah. you have to know your, you have to know the, the key things you want. Pump size, engine size, seating, how much hose you need to carry, yep. right? Size. And then everything else becomes the next column, mm -hmm. right? Right. Okay. And then and then the next column is how do we operate and let's build this for how we operate. Right. I think, I think more and more it's becoming more commonplace for people to design the apparatus based around how they operate. And I think that goes back to the conversation we had a half hour ago about training based and how. People are understanding right. this combat ready. Well, they're getting quote, smarter quote, too. Right? Absolutely. Yes. You know, absolutely. You, you, you have to build your truck for what you're doing with it. Right. You can't, as I said, you may as well go buy a dump truck if not. Right. He can customize anything we want. Right. The thing is, you have to have that thought, and you have to know what you want to do. Absolutely. That's, and if you that's and it. a lot of and and especially in the older days. 20 years ago, we really didn't know what we wanted to do. We were still really Those fire departments. Fire yeah, we, we were fire do. departments, and occasionally we did a rescue thing. Well, now we're all rescue companies that do an occasional fire. fire thing. Right. Yep. But you have to be prepared for all of that, and you have to set your vehicle up to as you're going to roll. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, you have to build your apparatus for what it's... And the, and the thing is, our, our apparatus has always been custom but now it's really custom because now the people who are buying them actually know what they want yep where before it was the salesman going hey this we looks great this. yeah or, let's go for or, it yeah there's a lot of, yeah i got your led yeah. diode on yeah. your door yeah. handle yeah. so you can see it at night you get too many people that are just buying an engine and it's yeah. just an engine it's a red box with a pump and a hose bed and some compartments yeah. on the side that you put your stuff and in there and were a lot of times when a volunteer companies go well you know we have an unlimited budget so we're gonna buy the best of everything well Thing is, it just because it was the best for somebody else doesn't make yeah, it the it best for you. for you. That's not how you operate. Yeah, right. And now everybody is really starting to get in thinking of, well, how do I actually use this vehicle? And I'll, I'll tell you this though too. I mean, we're, we keep talking about custom, custom, and, and along with custom comes money. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yes. And so we're talking about you know uh, departments. I mean, what what we're, tonight we're you know everything we talk about is it has a price tag with it. We, could, we also need to talk about the other end of things real quick is that not everybody has that ability to customize. And so you might have a, um, you know, a rural municipality who works so hard to get a piece of equipment. And so, but I think what's incredible about that is whatever they can do and they customize it themselves and they make it work for them. And then the other thing too is I know through uh, the market share that we're gaining on Instagram with our apparatus innovation and so on, I did see a lot of back and forth about uh, a couple career guys were like, oh, it's nice that you're able to, you know, design what you want. We don't, we don't get a say in, in, the, in the piece that's delivered yeah, well, they, and so on. They generally have a committee, but Correct. As, <clears throat> as the committee members get, um, you know, more into this and watch different things, mm -hmm. you know, they'll gain all this information too. True, true. And again, I think seeing it. 
Yeah. I, no, but but more and more people are getting out. They're going to shows. You have a yeah. phone so you can look something up. Somebody mentioned something to you at the firehouse, and you're going, well, I don't want to be stupid, so, you know, what's that? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that is well, funny. Yeah, but, but, you know, but that, that being said, and as someone who works with multiple different fire companies every week, <laughs> I see you get the 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 chiefs or... The senior men who have been doing it this way for 30 years yeah, so they, why are we going to change now right right you know so you, you you get or the the older guy that doesn't have facebook doesn't have you know what are you Instagram looking at me for anything not you i'm just looking at them, but, um, you know, you know what don't I mean? have instagram pick up you know what i mean like just 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 that kind of stuff and then there's the young kid on the truck committee who follows national fire rating right. first do fabrication who, who sees this stuff. We want to know that. And kid. it's like, Chief, Chief, l- look at this. Look right. at this. These guys yeah. put hooks on the back of their cab. Yeah. Right. And so, no, we need hooks on the inside. That, that doesn't look good on the outside. We're not going to look good, you know, for the parade. Right. Are we building parade trucks or are we building fire trucks? Yeah. Yeah. you got to make the bus look a little different than everybody else's bus. So. Right, right. <laughs> but it, 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 it's funny because I see, I see both of it. I see the, sure. the, the you know... The older guys who, who want to do it the same way they've been doing it for 30 years, and I see the younger kids, and it's always a battle between those two guys. And I, I kind of step back. Yeah. Uh, this well, is, this to, is right? not yeah. my fire truck. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? well, that, that was the big thing, right? But, we were, yeah. this is not but we've my seen fire trends truck. before. I mean, look at how less than 10 years ago, the calf system. Oh, uh-huh. you need the calf system. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, oh, yeah, water, water still puts fire out. So, you know, it's things like that. And they were very big in our particular mutual aid. They're very big yeah, for I mean, a my short period of time. I have calf yeah. engines because we have a limited water supply in certain areas. Yep. And we can extend our extend our operation Absolutely. much further with a calf line in place yeah. than we can just... Well, the weight is place. fantastic, but... No, you know, I get it. There's pros and cons, right? Yeah. There's pros and cons. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt. Tucker, to kind of wrap things up, I mean, like, what is, for yourself as a, as a fabricator at um, Fire and Safety Services, what is one of the things that you're the most proud of? God, I, I take pride in everything. You have to. You have to put... I want you to pick a favorite child, all right? No. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only have one, and he's my favorite. Um, no, it, to me, I, I'm proud of the work that I produce. Because every truck that leaves there that has my stuff on it has my name on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When these guys go out to, to jobs at 2 a.m., because that's the only time that volunteers go out to structure fires is 2 a.m. in the middle of the night, um, I want that stuff to work flawlessly. I want it to last 20 years. I want it to look good. I want the welds to look good. Um, you have to take pride in your work no matter what you do, whether you're a welder, whether you're a landscaper, whether you're a plumber or a cabinet maker. I'm a big pride in your work kind of guy. So, you know, I want everything to be the best of my capabilities. So, you know, if there's something I'm proud of, it's 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 anything that leaves the shop that I've touched. It's fair enough. You know? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I pride yeah. ownership, right? I mean, last I, Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It goes it, in the fire service. It's yours. Thing. It's got your name on it. Own it. Whether, whether it's good or whether it's bad. If you did it, it's got your name on it. you got to own it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I want it to be good because I don't want to own anything that's bad. Right, I agree. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, think the, I think the important thing tonight, you know, we have hopefully, you know, a lot of people listen to us and, and check out our content. And I think um, what's exciting about that is, though, tonight, you know, hitting on something like this, I don't think this is talked about enough. No. no and I, I think we, I think we need to do, their, their <clears throat> and with the, with the success that we're having on this type of uh, content, I think we're going to do more of this, and, yeah, and maybe absolutely. we can get you to do more of it with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can sit here and talk about this for hours. Yeah, the yeah, committee and, you know. should actually take a little longer. I mean, you know, you should know that, well, in three years' time, we're going to be building of this. Yep. Well, let's start going out to the shows or seeing what the pictures are yeah, from the different companies, seeing what these. they got. Yeah, and then start looking at it and then see what we do. See how we can interview, yep, you know, works for our district, yeah. what bring it in, absolutely. roll it all yeah, in together. First do fabrication should offer like, like a little consultant. consultant. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've thought about it, yeah. but you know, there's a little uh, conflict of interest there that I have to be real careful with between myself and uh, 
fire and safety. So it sounds so, like he's starting uh, up a new company. No, <laughs> uh, that's his answer. No, but seriously though, like I mean, e even on that, just if, if it's not you, if it's somebody like you, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd, I'd prefer to see it, see you because I just I've watched your work literally. I so it. I appreciate but, it. But you know that I think that's the thing that that people miss is that we go into that whole like you know what I've been here for fifteen years and I know exactly what I need and. I mean, I, I tell you, like, one of the things that got us on our, our last engine um, was, and everybody can look up the Fairview Fire District and see what engine we bought, but it was, hey, we need this hose tray to fit five-inch hose. No problem. And I feel like an engineer. It's like, five inches? Got it. And that was, like, you know, and, and I never would have thought to actually take five-inch hose, lay it flat. It out and realize it's eight inches wide. Right. And <laughs> and they were just like, well, and this is what you... And then put your gloves on, like you were saying. Well, yeah. I mean, you gotta, you're gotta operating with so normal normal procedures, you know. And I, I think, in, in uh, but what I like and what I was getting at before, too, is what I really like about what we've discussed, and this is why I see such value in this, is that you bring a whole different perspective to the conversation, and it's not a, you're not a salesman. You don't care yeah. about the sale. And, you know... And it's like, um, you know, I just think it's so important because there's a lot of things that you hit on tonight that I'm sitting here scratching my head and I thought I was pretty well versed in a lot of things. No, and when it comes to apparatus, and that's why I'm kind of an apparatus nerd and, yeah, yeah. and I get into it. And I sat here and I listened to a couple of things you said tonight and I'm just, the wheels are spinning right now with the possibilities and, yeah. and what, what could be offered. And I think a lot of times there are, there are apparatus uh, consulting firms and we had one, the, the town asked us to bring one in 10 years ago or 15 years ago when we were getting an aerial and they said you need an expert to come in and tell you and the expert that came in was just that right he was just a consultant you know what do you want what do you think you need i'll tell you what i think you need and then we moved on and then but all the meat and potatoes of it mm -hmm. was still on the table and, and yeah, we did the same thing with that uh, rescue pumper that we built right. and uh Realistically, they came in and said we did a spectacular job. There was only two things they really wanted changed, and you would know these two guys, so they're really up I and up. I um, they said that the driver's seat uh, seat should be changed because it didn't have any bounce to it, so we didn't went to a different seat. And the other thing we went to was a Telmo retarder, which was something I was looking for in the beginning, yeah. but I couldn't really sell the town on it. Right. Now I don't need brakes for the rest of the time I own the truck. Right. Yeah, I got it. I got it. But I, I just, it, it's that different perspective. And, and so for me, I think um, this episode is going to go a long way because I think a lot of people are going to hear this and listen to some of this content. And uh, I think we hit on a bunch of great yeah, stuff. It, it, it just, it, it makes sense to pre-plan your apparatus. Just Absolutely. Just plan from yeah. the beginning. To and if you could, if, if they could figure out a way to get people like you involved in that, or at least... You know, here we get the basic design. Mm -hmm. All right, we send it on to you. This is an app. Uh, this is a list of some of the things we want to put on the vehicle. And then you can go over and go. Well, yeah, you know, most of this stuff should fit, but you got to look to where yeah. you want. Yeah. And really, some of this stuff you've got too many big things that you want in this front compartment mm -hmm. that aren't really usable and accessible immediately. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. just. That's good we, stuff. We, we can yeah. we can go in circles and talk about this. Of yeah. course, and we, will, and we will, and we will, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of wrap it here. But um, <laughs> but I will say just a couple things. Uh, one, Tucker is with Fire and Safety Services in South Plainfield, New Jersey, the New Jersey Pierce dealership. They have an incredible in-house fabrication shop, and if you ever have an opportunity and you want to see some incredible work and pieces of equipment, they're more than accommodating there, um, and you can reach out to them. Uh, also, you can follow Tucker's work on his own Instagram at, at First Do Fabrication. Yep. Yep. And so, at sign First Do Fabrication, he's got his own page where he documents, uh, you know, some of the work they're doing, his welds and, and some of the dividers and mounts and so on. So, very cool. Um, if you're building a truck, reach out. You have any questions? I'm more than happy to you awesome. know, answer. Yeah. Give you a little bit of insight here and there. You That's know, fantastic. No problem. So, I thank you. I thank you, brother. Yeah. Rob, are you going to wrap this thing up or what? Yep, just putting them down. <laughs> what? Uh, it's a brand new dog. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so much. Never mind, boy. Never mind. Wow. Never yeah. mind. Oh, maybe, I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll wrap it up. Yeah. Sydney, I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah, so I have to do it. Anyway, I'm one of those nights. For Tucker and Tuck, Tucker times two.
And, Tucker uh, Squared. Tucker Squared and, 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 and uh, <laughs> Rob and myself. Guys, thanks for checking us out. Don't forget our Instagram, National Fire Radio, YouTube, Facebook. Our audio podcast is now on iTunes and SoundCloud, so check it out. Uh, and we absolutely appreciate the support. What we're trying to do is just bring forth authentic content that I think you guys are interested in seeing. And, uh, and I can't thank you all enough for the feedback, the comments, the direct messages, and so on. And if you guys have something out there that you want to share, don't be shy, man. Hook us up on a DM. Call me. Text me. Send me some smoke signals. We'll reach out, and uh, we'd love to get together, see your department, see the whole culture and history of your department and your apparatus and so on. So we have a lot more to come. Uh, a lot more things are rolling out. Tucker Daly is our new addition to the family. Uh, he's going to be doing more podcasts with Rob. I'm going to be stepping out and doing a couple other things and some other new projects for National Fire Radio. But uh, excited to have Tucker on board. Thanks. You were our second podcast interview, I believe. And uh, we were just so blown away by you. Yeah. We thought we'd have to have you back. So yeah, we're going to call it. It's in the name. It is. And just, <laughs> just a little benefit out of all the two, for those that don't know, and you'll get to know, Tucker works at a brewery, and so that's why he is now part of the team. So, <laughs> you got to know somebody. <laughs> that's right. So, guys, thank you for following and watching, and uh, for all of us, thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Be safe. Check you out later. Hey everybody, it's Rob Riddler from National Fire Radio. Thanks for tuning in. Catch up with us on social media. We got SoundCloud, National Fire Radio, YouTube, National Fire Radio, Instagram, National Fire Radio, and Facebook, National Fire Radio. Guys, check us out. Take care. Be safe. See you later.